Hi, my name is Lee MacDonald. I'm an interventional cardiologist here at South Denver Cardiology. So a lot of times I get asked questions about PFOs. PFOs stands for Peyton Foramen Ovalis, and we like to abbreviate it and call it a PFO. PFOs are something that people are born with. We call that a congenital finding. I don't even consider it a defect because it is very common in the general population. About 25% of people have PFOs. So one out of every four people have one of these when they're born and most people it never changes throughout their life in the other 75 percent of people a pfo usually closes around the time you were born it has a meaning or a use when you're in your mother's womb it's how some of the blood travels through the developing heart but many people have uh, these and most people who have pfos do not have any problems from them throughout their life. It is occasionally associated with some uh, clinical problems um, that people come to see cardiologists for. So as I mentioned before, one in four people have PFOs. So most people will live their entire life and a PFO will not cause them any significant problems. Most people, when we find a PFO, it's an incidental finding. In most people do not need to have their PFO repaired or fixed. There are some patients who have strokes or neurologic events or even sometimes shortness of breath where we start to believe that the PFO may be involved in what happened to them, their stroke or their shortness of breath or other things. In those people, after a detailed workup and a consideration of uh, what's going on, there are people who then we decide that we should proceed to PFO closure where we can actually close these. I remember back when I was a medical student, one of the first surgeries that I walked into, I watched them take a 25 year old uh, girl and they actually closed her PFO, but this was quite a while ago. She had open heart surgery to have this done. Obviously, that's very invasive. The recovery time um, is a lot longer than what we do now. And what we can do now is we actually can go in through a vein in your leg and travel up to the heart and we are able to close the PFO with a device that collapses into a small tube. People can recover from this quite quickly and they can actually usually go home that day or the following day. So it's pretty amazing during my medical career for the people who need to have their PFOs closed, we have been able to really um, make it so that their recovery times and the things that they have to go through are much, much less. What are holes in the heart? There are several different types of holes in the heart that we encounter or people may be discovered to have. There are patent foramen ovales, which are the most common, and atrial septal defects. These two are both describing a communication or a hole between the two upper chambers of your heart. The other um, common hole that people can have in their heart is a ventricular septal defect. That's a hole between the two lower chambers, the ventricles of your heart. There are other there are other rare types of holes in people's hearts, but the ones that I just listed are the most common ones that we see patients for. A lot of people wonder if they have a PFO, and many pr people probably live their entire lives without knowing. And as I mentioned before, many people, it never causes any problems. There are times where we start to look and see if patients have PFOs. The way that we commonly look for that is with an echocardiogram and specifically we do a bubble study which is where we do an injection to be able to see if any bubbles are transiting through the atria. There are times where we want to do a more detailed test of your heart and we do what's called a transesophageal echocardiogram. That's where we put a small probe down your throat and we take ultrasound images to get a closer look at this territory. 
There are um, a few other ways that we can detect it um, that are not used as commonly. Um, there are cardiac MRIs and um, sometimes even CAT scans that can do it. And there are times where we do a study called a transcranial Doppler study where we can assess. But the most common way we look for PFOs um, is with an echocardiogram with a bubble study which is done on the surface of your heart. It's a non-invasive uh, test. Uh, it is actually still a, um, a difficult thing to you know, kind of talk to everyone about whether a PFO closure is right for them. This is really something that needs to be individually looked at. Each patient has a different story and there are different reasons. As I mentioned, some people have PFOs that are just incidental findings and they're not important and some people have PFOs that we decide need to be closed uh, via the procedure that we can do. There are um, as I mentioned, many people who we decide in the end, if they have a PFO, that, we'll, that we need to do nothing. Nothing needs to be done other than um, good medical care there, or basic medical care. Sometimes we recommend medications such as an aspirin or other blood thinning medications for people who have had strokes. Um, those are the things that we focus on and in a lot of people, as I mentioned, nothing is actually needed or they can be treated with medicines. In other people, we talk about doing a procedure to close their PFO. One of the really exciting procedures that has developed over the last 20 years is the ability to close PFOs and atrial septal defects through a small um, IV in your leg. As we mentioned, there are people who, because of strokes or shortness of breath or at times even headaches or migraines that we think that they may benefit from a PFO closure or an atrial septal defect closure which is similar. Um, those people then we would decide that they since they need the procedure um, we kind of go through and describe to them how it works but I want to give you a basic idea so you have an understanding of how these are done. Uh, a PFO um, closure is typically now done through the leg through a small IV in the femoral vein. The size of the um, IV is about the size of this blue tube. So as you can see in my hand here, it's quite small. So we, we numb up your leg, very, um, a very small area, and we place an IV with this blue tube in there. Then we can actually go all the way up to your heart and actually get inside of your heart and cross through the small connection that you have and then we're able um, to open up our device. And I want to give you a basic um, demonstration of how this works because I think it, sh it shows you how, how nicely and how easily this is done. But when we have this, obviously the tube that I would put inside a person is much longer than this. This one is short for demonstration purposes. But as you can see, I can pull this device into a tube, all like that, and basically the size, the tube is then moving up. The tube then moves up into your heart. And if you have a small hole or a flap like a patent foramen ovale, we can then take this small blue tube and I can push it through the little connection that you have. I can then advance the device and as you can see the first disc opens up on the one side of the um, connection or communication or hole that you have. I can then pull that up against the wall of your heart. Again remember all of the activity that I'm doing is outside of you and then I can release the other disc while it's still attached and I can see that both sides now are properly anchored and covering the hole that you have in your heart. If um, I'm convinced that everything is in the correct location and everything looks good on our ultrasound and on x-ray, I can then unscrew the device from the, um, from the uh, cable that it's connected to and what's left behind is this device. We then rely on your heart to skin this over a process we call endothelializing. Once that skins over, we hopefully have a complete barrier or a complete, we've completely sealed up the connection that you have. 
This device is the Amplatzer PFO device. This was recently approved by the FDA in the United States. We also use this device right here. It looks very similar. Um, and you can see here it's sitting in a pretend model of a hole in a heart. This is approved for people who have atrial septal defects. And again, it has a similar look to it. There are two discs. It also has a little more um, uh, tissue in it instead of uh, not quite as much metal. And they both work very well for closing atrial septal defects and patent foramen ovales. In summary, PFOs are uh, complicated connections are connections that a lot of people have. One in four people have. And as I've mentioned, it is a complex situation in many patients to decide on what is the best therapy. I'm a cardiologist here at South Denver Cardiology and one of the things that I've spent a lot of time doing research on and taking care of patients on is people with PFOs and people who have associated uh, problems that may be related to their PFOs, including strokes, migraines, shortness of breath. We have a lot of cardiologists here who are very familiar with that, and I would implore people, if you have questions, to please um, come see us or um, talk to your primary care physician if it's appropriate. I think we could be of a huge assistance to a lot of people on figuring out if their PFO is causing them problems or medical problems.